Coming up on this edition of the RMAX Showcase, we come to you from Durango, Colorado, in the campus of Fort Lewis College, where the Skyhawks welcome in a new head football coach, but he's far from a new face on campus. Plus, the school's president is entering her final year in the big chair. We'll see what Dean Thomas has in store for her final go-around. And with the fall sports season in full swing, the Skyhawks look to climb their way up the conference standings. We'll have plenty of game action for you as this edition of the RMAX Showcase starts right now. Welcome to Durango, Colorado and the campus of Fort Lewis College. Fort Lewis boasts a student population of about 4,000 students and is located about 30 miles north of the New Mexico border in the southwest corner of Colorado. Hello everyone, I'm Jason Carter. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. The Skyhawks are looking to rebound from a down year in 2016 and they're hoping a new head coach, someone who knows the program pretty well, can make that happen. The Fort Lewis football team is coming off a 4-7 and seven season, but they ended well, winning three of their final four games. But it still led to a change at the top, where the Skyhawks welcome back a familiar face. Being able to take over as head coach this year, it was, to me, it was a lifelong kind of dream, you know, since I've been uh, back here at Fort Lewis. Just, you know, the, the big reason for it is, of course, I earned my degree here. I played here. I got my start in coaching here. And... You know, I'd love Durango. I believe it's the best city in the Army. A four-year starter for the Skyhawks in the early 2000s, Morris is in his second stint at the fort after spending two years at Colorado State. I've known our administrative staff, um, you know, since 2002 with a lot of them, you know, when I was a player here. And so as far as the transition goes, it was pretty much seamless. This isn't his first head coaching position, having held the same spot at New Mexico Highlands before heading to Fort Collins. So there are a few things he's learned along the way. It's always more difficult to be a coach, you know, because when you're a player, you're concerned with what you have to do, and you're concerned with uh, what you got to do in order to help your team. As a coach, you're worried about all 22 guys as well as your coaches and, and your administration and your buses and everything else that goes along with it. One of those things that goes along with it is winning, and there's almost no bigger game on the Skyhawks schedule than the annual musket game rivalry against Adams State. Well, you know, I played in the Muskie game. I've coached in the Muskie game, and it's always, always an exciting, exciting game for us. You know, um, I can't remember too many times that that game has been lopsided. You know, it's almost always been a really tight football game that, you know, comes down to one or two plays, and whichever team, you know, doesn't make mistakes is normally the team that walks away with the win. Let's see which team walks away with the win as we take in the highlights of the 2017 edition of the Muskie game very first drive of the contest for Fort Lewis and they make it count. Bo Coleman rolls out, finds Mason Hatton in the back corner for a 7-0 Hawks lead. First drive of the second half, Hawks down 20-10 when Coleman keeps it himself and dives in from a yard out and the home team is down just three points. Fort Lewis had a hard time stopping the Grizzlies air attack as they threw for nearly 400 yards and three scores. Two of those went to James Holtop including this 24-yard strike to put Adams up 27-17. Fourth quarter, Fort Lewis still alive, down by 14 when Tyler Telfy punches it in from a couple yards out. That brings the team in blue to within a score. That was the final tally of the game for either team as Adams State wins back the musket, topping Fort Lewis 34-27. Yeah! I thought we played hard. I don't, I don't think anybody quit in the game. I thought the guys gave great effort. You know, uh, we got to eliminate some mistakes, and you know, I think the game would be a little different. I mean, our game plan was just to stop the quick pass, stop the run, and then stop their pass. And I think for the most part, we stopped their run, and we made them pass it. We just need to get a little bit more pressure, that's all. Running is in Becca Bramley's blood, but it was actually her father who did most of the running. That was until his race came to an end. One, two, three, Skyhawks! If you attend a Fort Lewis cross-country race, there's a good chance you'll see a five-foot blonde near the front of the pack. Hey, it wasn't until after completing a marathon her freshman year of college that Becca Bramley really picked up running. It was that just like initial drive and that initial like adrenaline and like runner's high that I had that I just fell in love with and wanted more and more and more of it. 
Members of her family say Becca reminds them of her dad, John, who was an accomplished runner before passing away right before Becca entered high school. Running was a therapy for me, and I say that all the time, of just, it was like my kind of therapy to grieve over his death. Um, and so definitely that is just like what connected me with him into running. She talks about her dad being with her when she runs and how there's some there's a connection and, and since that relationship was lost early it seems like there is something that she feels that is powerful and that drives her and moves her. That's what led her head coach Josh Kuhn to do a little bit of research. Turns out 2017 marked the 40th anniversary of her father setting a course record at the Mount Evans Ascent. It's a 14 mile run straight up the mountain in Idaho Springs, Colorado. So Becca decided she'd give it a shot. And at first I was like a little unsure and then he told me just to go for it and I was like, okay, like I'll try it 14 miles up a, hit a mountain. <laughs> um, but it was, it was special. It honestly, like I want to do it again and just because it was a completely different race of just maybe having the mindset that like my dad steps were on that same road and he ran that. Um, and just like the view was beautiful and like my whole family was there and so there, that was like very special. But her insecurity turned into a third place finish amongst all the women and the desire to continue to run in her father's footsteps. I did be start crying at mile nine because my whole family was there at the lake. When I was also like struggling or like um, hurting during the race, I just like thought of my dad and in a way I definitely think he was there with me of just in spirit for sure. Um, but yeah, I definitely felt a lot and just like very rewarding and passionate for running and passionate passionate for what I was doing because I knew that he had that same love and same drive. That does it for the first segment in this edition of the RMAX Showcase. When we come back, we'll sit down with the outgoing president and see if the volleyball team can start the conference season off with a couple of wins. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this timeout. <laughs> 